with one defeat, with 19 knockouts from North Dakota. Here is the WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Virgil Quicksilver Hill. And there he is, the champion, Virgil Hill, if you're wondering who the other champions are. Jeff Hardy, of course, rules the WBC. And Henry Maska from Germany is the IBF champion. And this is scheduled for 12 three-minute rounds. And thanks for all of your letters. Get on to some of those later. Also the result of our last competition. And a new one for you, so have a pen ready. Living in North Dakota, born in Clinton, Missouri. 36 wins, just one loss, 19 stoppages. And the one loss, of course, to Thomas Hearns. And he lost his WBA crown. That was back in June of 91. So Virgil Hill in the black. Had a few so shoulder problems and uh, the much vaunted left hook at one time has almost disappeared, but uh, still a very good left hand worker. Very competent champion. Not too sure he's uh, at the top of his form as he was a couple of years ago. And Hill first became champion way back in 87. He beat Leslie Stewart in four rounds. And saw Montana looking a bit fleshy. Don't get too many Mexican light heavyweights these days. Still the reigning Mexican champion. And strange enough, he's actually got a bogeyman opponent. He's lost three fights, two to the same guy. A guy called Isaias Lucero. He beat in the... F Ooh, or did he? Yes, he beat him for the uh, Mexican Championship in seven rounds in 91. And in fact, he lost it to the same man only two fights ago, so he's not the reigning Mexican champion. And his last fight was a, a point spin on ten rounds over Jorge Amparo. But a fair punch, he's got a record of uh, 23 fights, those three losses I mentioned, and 19 stoppages to his credit, but... Uh, the only other man to have beaten him was Troy Weaver in his second professional fight in one round. Weaver, of course, the uh, brother of Mike Weaver, former heavyweight champion. Nice right there from Montana, over the top, so he'll won't be able to relax here. Everyone else to take his crown. Never box a unification fight, Virgil Hill. and seems to be avoiding those that might give him a few problems. Quite sensibly, I suppose, in these uh, economics-dominated boxing times. 30 seconds to go in the opening round. And as expected, Montana firing that right hand pretty early. Just the test kills Chin. I must admit, I do apologise to Mr. Norman Quayle from Preston if I'm talking too much. Sorry, Norman. I don't quite know how to stop that. It's been a terrible disease with me for many years. Oh, nice shots there from Hill. Good anticipation. So the end of a good first round there. One you've got to give to Hill. And Montana might just have his best moments early on. He's boxed over 12 rounds before, but he lost. As I said, that was a couple of fights ago to Isaiah Lucero. Well, his Mexican title bit the dust. What a great amateur Hill was. Made the 84 Olympic team. All the way to the uh, finals of the middleweight division in Los Angeles. And he lost to the Korean, Hu Sip Hu Sup Shin. Who indeed. Made his debut in November of 1984 on the same night, oddly enough, that uh, Tyrell Biggs, Mark Breland, Bernard Whitaker, Meldrick Taylor, and Evander Holyfield made their debuts. Good fighter. After he lost to Tommy Hearns, he uh, took a bit of time off after that and went to live in Australia for a small while. But that was a very good win over Frank Tate to win the uh, 
by heavyweight crown for the second time. For 18 times so far in the state of North Dakota, Virgil Hill. A little counter punch straight left there from Hill. And Montana from the same stable as uh, Juan Jose Estrada, Raul Perez, Jorge Paez, and Manuel, and Manuel Medina. Of course, they were all former world champions, but uh, a little bit too small for him to spar with. And that left from Hill looks slightly borderline. Round two, this of a scheduled 12 rounder. Disputing Hill's WBA Light Heavyweight Championship. from Hill. Good body shots there and uh, Montana felt them. <laughs> Hill a very intelligent boxer which is of course why he's been at the top for so long. <laughs> Picking these left hands beautifully. Got the right shoulder slightly forward there, just in readiness to throw a right hand. Montana already breathing quite hard. Oh, lovely left to the body again from Hill. I must admit, Virgil Hill, his operation of the basics is brilliant. Nothing flashy about him, but uh, incredibly workmanlike at times, but still very, very effective. My money, in fact, will be on Hill to beat Jeff Harding, the WBC champion. But uh, he might have a few problems with uh, Henry Masker. So another good round there for Virgil. And that last competition, you might remember, I did ask, when was the last time a World Heavyweight title fight was scheduled for 20 rounds? Who took part in it and who won? I'm very glad to say I've got the five winners for this week's competition. Of course, of course, Joe Louis against Abe Simon. Scheduled for 20 rounds back in the... Virgil Hill so far has not put too much wrong. He took the odd right hand over the top from Montana in the first session, but uh, almost dominated the second with the left hand. And the independent world boxing rankings, you've got Virgil Hill at number one, and that's no great surprise. And uh, Montana in at 21, and that's probably just about right. Take your time, we'll pick it up. And of course, his performance against Virgil Hill will decide whether he goes up or down from 21. This shot might just have come a bit too early for Montana. Hill, a good thinking fighter. There's your one, two. And again, that body shot from Hill, slightly low. Referee saw that. His name's Hubert Earl. Sounds like a gunslinger. No surprise from North Dakota. And ironically, I think the uh, neighbouring state of uh, North Dakota is Montana. Yeah. 
Roger Hill, still defensively very smart. Good counter puncher these days too. To do it either way, going forward or backwards. shooting his left hand out. It's a joy to watch when it's done right. Really bang on form here. Poor old Sol Montana has really bitten off a big lump here. Very hard to swallow. And I must admit, Hill is treating Montana nothing more like a sparring partner than a, a world title challenger. So a good round once again then for Virgil Hill. This is the halfway point. And if I didn't know better, I'd say that Hill was almost showing off here. Standing in front of Montana the whole time, jigging one way, then the other. Doesn't give this man a second to rest. Always keeping him thinking. And if Montana does seem to land a punch, kills the how dare you, and puts a couple together. You wouldn't need too many fingers to count the uh, effective punches so far that Montana's got through with. But Hill was probably right about Montana. Who has he boxed? Who has he beaten? which makes him, of course, a perfect candidate for a World Championship shot. No one wants to fight dangerous challenges these days. Oh, and they're looking brilliant. Absolutely dominating Montana. And he wants to watch those left hooks to the body. They're a little bit wide. And Montana can make a meal of those. Even time to wind them up before they go. And this is getting a bit painful to watch now. Oh, look at that. You held my arm, mate. Take that. Uh, and that's got Hill riled now. <laughs> a little shuffle as well, just before the bell. Oh, uh, well, we're going to have a bit of extra time. We're not. <laughs> I love it. So, great round there. Bit of spirit shown from Montana as well towards the finish. And Chuck Brodak's got some work to do on this man to motivate him. Steve Collins defends his title against Wayne Ellis. Collins, the number one contender for Chris Pyatt's world title, can't afford to slip up against a tricky Welshman. The WBO Pentacontinental Middleweight Championship, Collins versus Ellis, Tuesday, 10 p.m., live on Eurosport. Replay here from the seventh round.
And that's the moment when Montana held the left hand of Hill and Hill hit him twice with the right. Montana didn't like it, but Hill said, right, well, you asked for it. And in danger of getting slightly out of hand there as well towards the finish. And I'll give you our new quiz question at the end of the next round. Once again, the prize will be five winners will each receive the latest in those independent world boxing rankings, the updated version. So, we continue. Round eight. And I'm trying to remember a time in this fight when Montana has actually hit Hill with a straight left. He's uh, thrown the odd over arm right, but they've not come to much. So Montana looking fairly sprite on his feet, considering those uh, thumping shots he's taken to the body. He's actually weathered them quite well. And this looks like a very comfortable night's work for Hill. But he's still got to do it. And Hill's got very good vision. He knows exactly where his man is, what's coming. And uh, more importantly, of course, what he's going to throw. Chopping right. <laughs> oh, lovely left hook. And Montana looking incredibly durable. I don't really think that Hill is putting everything behind a lot of his punches, but uh, Montana's taken them. He got wobbled earlier on with the left hook. He's walked through most of the things that uh, Hill has thrown since. But his spirit, that's what's getting dented now. Once again, a great round for Hill. So that new question then, I want to know, or I don't want to know, well I do, from you. Tim Bailey, one of our viewers from Burton and staff sent this in, also one of this week's winners. He wants to know who's the oldest fighter to take part in a professional contest. I don't mean a championship, just the oldest fighter to have taken part in a pucker professional fight. Let me know, 85 Sussex Road, Watford in Hearts is where you send your entries. Steve Holdsworth, of course, not Peter as some of you have been putting. Not Harry, not Ian, not Glenn, not Reg. And also, thanks for all your standard dress envelopes for photographs. I'll get them off to you this week with a bit of luck. Keep them coming. So into the ninth, and so far, I've got Virgil Hill winning every round, with Montana eight points behind. So, a few knockdowns in each of the uh, remaining rounds by Montana, wouldn't go amiss here for him. But can you see it happening? No, me neither. And this left hand is like a surgeon's knife. There's no blood on the face of uh, Montana, but uh, 
the damage it's doing to him psychologically is what counts here. And there's no anesthetic either. And I would imagine that uh, Saul Montana will get him shot, himself a shot at uh, a couple of other championships as well because he looks so beatable. He could probably make Super Midler a push. Well, maybe not even a push. He looks fairly podgy. Three of them. You can almost hear Hill saying, take that. Ooh, we've got caught with the left hand then. If the punch statistics were on the screen, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, once again, down to the body, up to the chin from Hill. Possibly the free Hubert Earl might just think about thinking, well, Montana, you've had enough. Absolutely flawless performance so far by Hill. Good stuff. Managed by Bill Sorensen. Virgil Hill, trained by Mike Hall and Al Lazian and Ray McCline. That's what sets your hook. Double the hook, turn the hook back over, right? All right. Right over. again, right after. All right. Okay, seconds, let's go. So round 10 then of this uh, World Boxing Association Light Heavyweight Championship. The champion in the black, Virgil Hill, making his fifth defense in his second reign against Saul Montana from Mexico. Montana five years younger, but looking 10 years older. They don't count for anything, Saul. So far, Montana has not been off his feet from a punch. As I say, he's proven to be fairly durable. But he's way out of his depth. And of course, punch power means absolutely nothing if you can't land. Nice left hook, and Montana ducks straight into that one. With the swelling now, Montana's left eye. So one-sided, it's ridiculous. He's nine points behind, nine rounds behind, and going absolutely nowhere. And I want to see the referee step in and uh, prevent this from going too much further.
And the court, yes, quite right. The corner man has jumped in and decided Montana's had enough. And he's the only one, of course, who didn't see it because it was behind him. So Virgil Hill then retains his uh, WBA championship for an all the 15th time. What a record that is. Excellent performance by Hill. And uh, that, I'm afraid, was a gross mismatch. A chance, of course, to see Hill at his best. I'll just repeat that uh, latest quiz question if you just joined us. I want to know who the oldest fighter was to take part in a professional contest. Not a championship, just the old run of the mill. And there's those left hooks from Hill. Crashing right hand as well. And poor old Saul Montana didn't need that. And of course, as you can see, the referee and Virgil Hill both saw the corner man. And that was uh, Romulo Querati coming in the ring, but uh, it was behind Montana's back, so he didn't quite know what was happening there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your winner out of the blue corner at 2.26 of the 10th round. He's still...